It is a beautiful autumn day and I'm on my way to historic Deseronto, Ontario. Not just for a tour of the beautiful downtown and some of the historic landmarks there, but also for a personal tour of the old Arlington Hotel. Now, it is no longer in use, hasn't been for years, but the current owners of the Dockside Tavern, which is attached to the Arlington Hotel building, have agreed to give me a personal tour tonight. And they've agreed as well to talk about some of the scary things that have been seen and experienced over the years inside the abandoned building and near the abandoned building of the Arlington. So I just thought, us being this close to Halloween, it would be kind of cool to, to take you on a bit of a scary tour tonight, but also a very historic tour of the Arlington and all the historic landmarks around beautiful Deseronto, Ontario. So I hope you enjoy it. Like many small Ontario towns, Deseronto holds a rich and vibrant history that can easily go unnoticed by those just passing through. A group of Mohawks became this area's first settlers after fighting alongside the British in the American Revolutionary War, and they established a church here the same year they landed on these shores back in 1784. It was first built as a log church close to the present site, and the current building was built in 1843. King Edward VII honored Christ Church with the additional title of His Majesty's Chapel in 1904, and today it's known as Christ Church, Her Majesty's Chapel Royal of the Mohawk. In the chapel cemetery, you'll find the grave of renowned Mohawk chief, speaker, and physician, Dr. Oren Hayateka. Among many other accomplishments, he attended the Universities of Toronto and Oxford. In 1871, he was a member of Canada's first Wimbledon rifle team. And in 1874, he became president of the Grand Council of Canadian Chiefs. The eastern part of the Mohawk Reserve was patented by John Culbertson in 1837, a move that has since met with speculation as to whether or not it was actually legal. And as of the date of this production, the tract is now the subject of a land claim that is under negotiation. Culbertson registered a survey for the village in 1850, and the settlement was called Mill Point from then until 1881. Hugo B. Rathbun acquired many village properties around 1855 and began to build a small empire thanks to his shipyard and sawmill. In 1871, Mill Point was incorporated as a village, and in 1881, it was renamed Deseronto and officially became a town in 1889. By the turn of the century, Deseronto was a bustling community. Naylor's Theatre was built in 1901 and served as a venue for vaudeville acts before being converted into a movie theatre in the 40s. The building was designed by Belleville architect Thomas Hanley, and terracotta from the Rathbun Company's terracotta factory just up the street was used on the exterior. The theater closed after owner Thomas Naylor's death in 1922 and reopened in 1947 as the Deseronto Bayview Theater, managed by Stan Merrick, who also happened to be proprietor of the Arlington Hotel, not far along Main Street, just past the post office. And there are those who say that the ghost of Stan Merrick has been seen inside the hotel. Today, the Dockside Tavern is attached to the shell of what was the Arlington. The building is fascinating not just to ghost hunters, but also to fans of author Francis Atani, whose great-grandfather was once a proprietor of the hotel as well. Her grandmother was born in the house adjoining the Arlington in 1898, and Atani used her life story as the inspiration for the main character in her award-winning novel, Deafening. So let's check in with Al, one of the current proprietors of the Dockside Tavern and the adjoining Arlington Hotel, no longer in use, to hear some of his rather unsettling stories. I've been sitting in the office I don't know how many times when we first, not so much lately in the last couple of years, but when we first bought the place, I'd be sitting in the office, you'd hear somebody walk up the, up the staircase, up the front stairs, you'd hear keys jingling, you'd hear people whistling. Uh, I was sitting in here one night waiting for friends to come in from out of town. Bar stool moved. Got up, searched the entire bar. Nothing. Went back in the office, sat down. Bar stool moved. Now I'm getting really kind of like, okay. Started watching all our security cameras. Nothing. For better, 
part of an hour and a half, I actually walk, watch the cameras, but every 10 minutes, 15 minutes, you hear a bar stool move. No bar stools moving. Bar one of my bartenders and his girlfriend were in here one night about 10, 11 o'clock. We used to stay up until midnight, and they were over at the pool tables, probably 20 feet away from the bar, on the bar. They both turned and looked at each other, and as soon as they said, did you hear that? On the bar again. Uh, we had a picture, we actually caught it on camera, on our security cameras. Straight out from the wall, about two feet, and dropped. Smash on the ground. A picture. A picture off the wall. I heard that story. That was probably Brian's story. Yeah, yes. Brian told me that. Um, he's told me he's come in many times early in the morning. He's heard like the old Lawrence Welk style music. He come in the front doors and there's a ladder there. So you went around and you used to go through a door into the old side. He'd come in, the music would just be blaring. Turn the music down. <laughs> and they'd actually, you'd hear the music drop. I've set the motion sensors on the cameras. And you can actually follow the motion sensors from the front door, in through the bar, into the hallway, over to the pool tables, and you can actually track it right back out, out to the front door. What is it you're seeing on the motion sensors nothing. when you look back? You don't see nothing. It just But there's something moving. A little motion sensor icon pops up, and you can track it. Um, I've seen kind of a shadow figure. You now you just kind of see, you know, you've seen somebody walk past, but you were not quite sure, up and down this hall. They're always heading towards the front, towards the girls' bathroom. Get up, take a look. You got a wall in the girls' bathroom there. There's nowhere for anybody to go. That's been seen numerous times. I've seen one. I was actually standing at the bar talking to two female customers. And just turned and I thought I saw someone walk past them. And I actually had to double take a look back to see if someone did, like, because it was too close behind them for my comfort to, because it looked like it was invading your space. So I turned and looked. There was are you comfortable with all that stuff? Does it bother you at all? Or are you okay with it? Doesn't bother me at all. And how about the staff? Are they all okay with it and used to it too? Kyle, <laughs> Kyle was a little freaked out. He's the one who actually experienced the uh, the slamming on the bar the one night. Um, Chuck, he doesn't doesn't believe in it at all until he's probably had it. Once he has an experience, then he'll realize or actual proof shoved in his face. But it doesn't bother anybody yeah. else. They don't know it's haunted. They don't pay no attention to it. They'll hear the odd footsteps up the hallway, but that's it. Nobody pays no attention to it. And they're not harmful, obviously. No, they're that's just... what uh, the psychics told us was that, you know, there's Stan and this lady in white dress. They go from this side to the old side, back and forth. But the ones they felt over in the bar on the old side, they stay over there. They don't come over here. But outside of that, they, the one lady said that Stan said, well, however he communicated to them, that he was quite happy with the place and quite impressed with it. So. So never having been in before, maybe you can tell me a little bit about kind of where we are and what this was. And uh, this is actually the bar. Oh, okay. behind all this junk. That's yeah. the bar. The beer rooms back there. Um, outside of that, I really don't know. Uh, I used to drink here. Won't take you down. But that's the actual hand dug basement from like 1810. Wow. Down there. Okay. And this was just basically beverage room. Everyone drank beer pretty well. Draft was a yeah. big popular thing, and they would serve, you know. By nickel drafts. Yeah. And they come up with a tray, you know, full of the little glasses. You have experienced weird things here, right, Al? Like you've oh, yeah. seen weird things. Yeah. So tell me a story. Has anything happened in this room that we're in? In here? No. No? Okay. Upstairs. Will you yes. take me somewhere where something weird yeah. happened and tell me about yeah. it? Yep. Awesome. Like I said, I know where I'm going, so. I feel like I know where I'm going and I don't, but. <laughs> <laughs> I fearlessly follow. So the, were these actual hotel rooms up here? Yes. Is this what we're doing? Okay. Yes. These are actual hotel rooms. Uh, cool. Now, I haven't seen it personally myself. My stepfather, Brian, the older gentleman, just was in the garage there. He's seen it on numerous occasions. A couple of years ago, the uh, the library does a, a haunted house walk. Yeah. And they brought in a couple of the, uh, psychic mediums. Didn't tell them a thing. They hit the top of the stairs. We opened the door. First thing they said is, did you see the cat? I never told him anything about a cat. There's a ghost of a cat that runs through here. It runs up and down this hallway. Yeah, and like I said, I didn't tell the psychics anything, so I let them pick up their own feelings. Wow. 
Well, Another it used room. to be what the, the match factory across the road, the cannery was across the road, train station was here. So these rooms. Wow, were look at the old wallpaper. All the time. That's neat. And the last room this way. Wow. That's pretty incredible, really, to think about the history in all these old rooms. Yeah, it'd be interesting if the walls could talk. Yeah. To see what all happened in here over the years. So. Yeah. Now, I know, I don't feel it myself, which is actually surprising, but uh, there's one corner here, and I won't tell you, that people actually pick up a really bad, cold, chill vibe, and I won't tell you where, so if oh, you okay. take it out of the room. Wow, I love all the old exposed brick and big windows. Wow, it must have been beautiful in here originally. Oh, there you know? were several hotels in town, yeah. and they were all beautiful. Now, the psychics did tell me when they were coming through here, um, since you didn't seem to pick it up, right where actually Jamie's standing. Yes. That's the corner everybody gets a bad vibe in. Oh, right here. Right in this corner. The bad, cold vibe. Yeah. Interesting. Now, like I said, I didn't tell them anything over here, and from what they could tell me was that there was, well, they picked up the ghost, they picked up the ghost in that corner, and... Uh, cat. So like I said, I didn't tell them anything about anything over here. And <clears throat> they picked up several, say, good old boys still hanging around in the bar area. Wow. Drinking. Men can never stop drinking, can they? <laughs> they just, they die and they keep drinking. They just now, never stop. And it's common knowledge. Everybody in town knows that Stan used to own the place. Yeah. First thing they picked up was Supposedly, when they walked through the door, was oh, Stan's here. Wow. And they got a woman in a white dress. But they didn't say a name on her. Yeah. Today, the area that once was the Rathbun Company's expansive shipyard and sawmills, various factories, flour mill, terracotta works, steamboat company, and railway, and much more, is quiet and largely unused. And the Arlington Hotel? Its future is undecided. The current owners have plans, but could it ever be as it once was? Perhaps what's more important is that it's still here at all. And because of that, the ghosts of its past, real or imagined, still have a place to call home.